<laughs> oh, you like me? You got a you got a broken cassette deck, but I got a broken uh, aux cord. Oh, uh, my son got that piece out of that damn thing. Filming live from a third story one bedroom apartment in North Mishawaka, Indiana, the cursed city of the goose. It's the handlebar growing mustache extravaganza with your host Dave. Handlebar mustache show, handlebar mustache show. Stash is looking great, but we can't be late for the handlebar mustache show. Welcome back to year five, day 157, take two, what if by land edition. Well, I'm joined here, as always, by my good friend, Fatty. Ah, uh, hello, North, North Mishawaka, or I should say Northeast Mishawaka. Yes, we hello. were just talking about, I've got a tape deck and a CD player in my car, and the seed, well, since they don't make cassettes anymore, they don't make cassette cleaners anymore. So I would have to get one that already existed, maybe off a of Craigslist or something. But I'm kind of leery of doing that. So I, I thought cassettes would have been the thing of the past. We barely got over eight track tapes. Yes. So I don't have any way to clean my tape deck. And I have uh, my two cassette tapes of. Um, Zin, Zindada Mundada, my two prized possessions. I'm not going to put those anywhere near my car. I keep them at home so they're safe. But um, they're, they're, I use them to calm myself down at night sometimes. And I don't need to have my computer on to play them. So I can give my computer a rest too. And then they can play my favorite songs. Uh, it's so nice, like uh, a, a hotel room's a prison cell, because he's got to go to a different place a hundred miles away every night. Uh, life on the road. I've never known life on the road, although I am going to Holland with my good friend, lady friend Fran. We're going to go see 12 angry teenagers. Hopefully they won't be using their apps and their emojis. How'd you guys get all of them? Well, it's supposed to be 12 Angry Men, but it's going to be uh, cast by teenagers. Ah. So. What's the actual uh, thing they're doing there? Okay, I thought you meant you had 12 going with you. I'm like, what the hell? No, no, going? they wouldn't fit in the Grand Am. I'd be lucky to uh, fit three possums in the backseat. Or opossums, as they like to be called. So anyway, I wanted to talk today about the Hussein Bolt and the Michael Phelps. They say that Hussein Bolt's uh, accomplishments are better because more people run. It's a more relatable activity than swimming because not everybody can swim. And I'm not sure if I believe that. I think swimming is probably on average harder than running or oh, everybody you know, you know, trying to get away from somebody yeah well if I was trying to get away from somebody they're not going to catch you so that's one good thing well if you were trying to get away from the police dogs you might want to go in the river for a while um I you might swim downstream on the river. A good combination of swimming and floating and running would be the guy like the decathlete. Yes, but if you couldn't so swim, you couldn't get away from the dogs. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm thinking if you want to be a top-notch fugitive, you got to learn how to swim. But yeah, if you I just... I never be one, so I can't swim and I don't want to fly, so I'll, I'll never make it. They'll catch me. No, no, they would just drug you like they do Mr. T. Mm -hmm. Give you a bunch of Xanax or something. <laughs> or they would upgrade your Miller Lite to like something like um, Hennessy or something. Oh, they got the master plan to... They would give you a, a bottle of Xanax and a bottle of Hennessy, and then you'd be halfway to your destination before you even knew it. Hell, I'd be halfway to death. I don't want to do that. Oh. <laughs> well, they would have to have a doctor at the other end to revive you. I like to move slowly and methodically. I don't want to rush things. Well, you wouldn't be moving very fast after that cocktail. 
No, no, I just don't want to like have one foot in the grave and one out. So. Yes. Well, maybe we should take the train. Have you ever taken the? Truck. Have you ever taken the train, Fat? Yeah. Yep. See, maybe the train would be I'm more our speed. Plane. I just don't like it. I won't do it again unless we have to do it for an emergency to see my mom or my kids or something, or you or whatever. But I can't. I'm not going to fly casually just to go to Florida. Right. Nope. There's too many problems, way more than there were when I didn't like flying, so it's even worse now. Well, they still haven't found that Malaysian plane. Yeah. See what I mean? I don't fly planes, and I don't like the Bermuda Triangle. So, hmm. I steer clear of trouble. Yes. We were interviewing a girl, you know, for our interview today. She lived in Michigan City, and she was going to commute to South Bend. But she said she had a good car. She wasn't worried about the snow. We told her that there'd be lots of snow in Laporte. She said but she I'm had. Worried a about the trucks on the way, and it's pretty. The last four years of driving has made me a better driver, but still not exempt to problems with big semis and stuff. I hate that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, she. You know, I'm not sure if she take the toll road. Sure. She said she had the Subaru. Yeah, if Jared goes to Chicago and gets that job, he's going to commute on the train, so he's smart. He's not going to, I mean, it's commutable from Michigan City to South Bend, no problem, but it has to be worth your pay, because I'm not really, well, I'm doing okay, but you got to make sure it's enough money. My baby takes the morning train, he works from 9 to 5, and then he comes back home again. To find me waiting for him. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That is nice. Now, he just needs to find a nice young lady that would cook him supper on the way home. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find, so... Maybe like a flank steak and some corn on the cob, maybe some green beans and a potato. Uh, not everybody's got a made the like you, Yeah, yeah, that friend's a pretty good cook. Yeah, yeah. She made some chili today just off the top of her head. That's well, off the top of your head. she used her hands too, I'm sure. Yeah, you gotta do that. It'd be pretty tough to be a cook without proper utensils. And yeah, her doctor put her on an all meat diet. That'd be great. That's why we had. That's what I said. That's why we had to go to the outback yesterday. Did I tell you we got free appetizer and free dessert? I've done the old protein diet before. Plenty of protein, not so much starch, and plenty of uh, other stuff or veggies. But yeah, hey, veggies, not that, too much fruit. Great. Little veggie. But it kind of leaves a funny taste in your mouth after a while. But you have to get used to that. So. Funny like a and clown? Too, so that always leaves a funny taste anyway. So. Huh. Well, we don't want to be eating any clowns. the old uh, American spirit, so I'm trying to get away from all the unnatural stuff. Plus, I smoke like half the amount of cigarettes now. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. I tell you what, Fat, there's nothing better than that 21 milligram patch. You'd be yeah, feeling like a champion on that. I wish I could still be on it. I wish I could still be on it. Nah, you, well, you whipped it. You whipped it. You, you did it. You got rid of the cigarettes. So you did well. So. Ah, this is the old elongated version of the handlebar mustache show. Oh, yeah. We're well into our eighth minute. We better wrap it up, fat. <laughs> okay. I've probably said too much. I think I probably have. But uh, just enough for you. In that case, knock on wood. Keep it classy, you know, Web. And until I see you manana, from Fat T and I, we bid you all a riven archie and a doom. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. We better rap, rap, rap. I'll take it. I've been watching you for days now, baby. <laughs> I just love your second.